everyone. Happy Friday. Just waiting for everyone to get here and we'll get started. Sierra. Hi, Sierra. Hi, Jackie. Happy Friday. Hi, Sam. We're getting ready to get our chicken curry on and we'll get started. Maybe a couple minutes, we'll let a few people get here and then I'll explain what we're going to do. Just Christine. Hi, Christine. Hi, Marie. Yeah, eight All right, we have eight people. We're going to go ahead and get started. Happy Friday. I don't know about you, but I need today and the weekend. I am ready. So I'm super excited. This is one of my favorite meals. It's a really quick meal. Um, it's easy to mix and match. You can go rogue. I won't tell anyone if you go rogue. So you can put whatever you want in here. So we're going to do a quick chicken curry. Oh, and I'm, I'm Christy from Sour Patch Chef. I'm Christy from Sour Patch Chef. And we're going to be doing a quick chicken curry. Um, I'm using chicken thighs tonight. You could use chicken breasts. You could use the little cutlets. You know, when they're already butterfly, you can use canned chicken. So I know I've talked with some people about, you know, they're having trouble getting chicken and some other things. Use canned chicken, and I'll explain what we're going to do to modify for that. You could use shrimp if you wanted to. Uh, tofu. Like, don't feel like you have to be limited to just chicken. You could try other proteins as well. Whatever you can find. I've even done this with Italian frozen meatballs if you wanted to. So what I have here, I'm just going to explain the ingredients I have and then we'll get started. So I went ahead and chopped up the tomatoes. So it was two Roma tomatoes. I chopped them up with a, a nice fine dice. Hey Anne! And then Chef Anne's here guys so no pressure. <laughs> we got to be on our best behavior. <laughs> Um, so I've got my chopped tomatoes. I have chopped cilantro. Cilantro goes really great in this dish. Uh, we have curry powder. So the spices we're using today are the main ones are curry powder and ground cumin. Okay, that's where you're going to get all your flavor from. Um, I'm going to go a little rogue. I have my ginger garlic paste. In the, it's not in the recipe, but you can just add whatever you like. Hey, Casey! Then... We have, one of the things that we have been able to find in the grocery store that's in the canned aisle is garbanzo beans, which are chickpeas. So if you can't find them, you know, they won't say chickpeas, they'll say garbanzo beans. Um, and then, so over here on the back burner, let's see, move you a little closer. So I have chicken broth, it's nice and warm, so it's boiling, I'm gonna turn it down to a low. I just did one chicken bouillon cube. Um, into about 400 grams of water, which is about a cup, or it's about a cup and a half water. But you could do, if you have the chicken bouillon base, you could do like a tablespoon or a teaspoon of the chicken bouillon base into your water. You could get the box chicken broth or the canned chicken broth if you have that. You could use vegetarian broth, you could use beef broth, whatever you have. If you have some fish stock, use that. Okay, and then in my big pan, I'm using a nonstick pan today because it's easier to clean. I've got sunflower oil heating up on medium high. It's about a tablespoon. And then later on, for flavor, I'm going to add a little butter. So, first things first, we're going to sear our chicken. We're going to get it cooking, and then I'll explain what else we're going to do. So, I'll go ahead. So, this was, we had chicken thighs. They're boneless, skinless. Um, they will take a few days to defrost, like ours were stuck in the freezer. So, a few days to defrost. Recipe's not online yet, but I'll put it up to, uh, tonight. I just want to make some modifications and explain some different ways you can mix and match it up. So, I've got my oil nice and hot, and I can smell it. Like, it's starting to get nutty. You'll also know that it starts to get wavy, um, like you can see lines in it. You're going to take your chicken thighs and you're going to put them so you see how you have an ugly side and then you have a clean smooth side hey dale good to see you or 
hear or hear you or talk to you. <laughs> so you have a, a smooth side and you have a side that's kind of ugly. It's kind of all scraps. So I like to go smooth side down first. So we season with salt and pepper and that's it. And then we also dried it off with a paper towel so we don't have excess moisture. So I'm gonna put it down in the oil. We bring it closer. Do, 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 come with me. All right. So smooth side down. And I'm gonna try and get it in the oil. It's gonna pop, that's okay. You're in control of the chicken. That's how you know it's hot enough. Make sure you get the, all the chicken in the oil. All right, this is the hardest part for people. Now, you are gonna take your tongs, close them up, put them aside for three minutes. No touchy touchy. I'm gonna save my plate, because the chicken's not gonna be done when we take it out. We're gonna get a nice sear on it. Um, we're gonna get a nice sear on it, and then we will take it out and we'll build our sauce, and then we'll finish it in the sauce so it gets that nice homey flavor. Um, if you were doing this in a stainless, pan, stainless steel pan, you would get a lot of fond on the bottom. That's all the brown stuff on the bottom. Don't think that you need to scrape that out. That helps you build even more flavor in your sauce. So that's really good. So while that's cooking, I'm going to explain what we're going to do to our chickpeas. So I dumped my one can of chickpeas into a bowl with cold water. Okay, the chickpeas, you're rubbing them in between your fingers. You're not squishing them. You're trying to get the, the shell off. So let me show you. So on here, if you squeeze it, there's a white shell. It's good fiber. So like if you want to leave it in, it's fine. But what happens is when you're making a sauce, some of these will come off and they'll get in your sauce. And people will be like, what is that white, you know, gooey thing hanging out in the sauce? So I like to take as much off as I can for sauces. If you're doing hummus, you don't have to take it off. All right, so I'm just rubbing them in between my fingers. The water, so they're going to float to the top. So the water helps them so they float to the top. Funny story, one time I was making this with um, kids in the kitchen. We were, cook we were doing a cooking class with a bunch of kids. And I came back and they had squished so hard it was like chickpea meal. <laughs> so we made, you know, we made a sauce. It was a little interesting looking. So don't squish them. <laughs> All right. So as I stir this up, they're starting to float to the top. You see all those white things floating top? I'm going to add a little water in my bowl. I go through with my little baby strainer. Isn't this thing cute? It came in a set. You see, it kind of weirds me out to see those in my, in my beautiful sauce. So I'm getting rid of those guys. You also want to make sure you don't dump those guys down your garbage disposal or even down your sink. They will clog up. So even if you don't like chickpeas, um, or it's, especially if it's a texture thing, like for me, I'm kind of weird about textures when it comes to beans and um, peas and stuff like that. If you cook chickpeas long enough, they get really tender where they just melt in your mouth. And that's what we're going for here. So give yourself, even though this is a quick meal, give yourself enough time so that you can get them nice and tender. I'm gonna strain these out in a colander and I'll be right back. Let's flip our chicken. All right, so when you flip, you're gonna flip away from yourself. So get in there with your tongs and flip. And if you did it right, you should have a nice golden brown crust. And that, Allison, is what you get for not touching your chicken. Allison knows I don't ever let her flip the chicken. <laughs> have to take her tongs away. Marie too. All right, so we're still at a medium high heat. Um, I could even turn it up more if I wanted to go a little faster. It can be like medium high, so mine goes up to a nine. I have it on seven and a half, eight. The key is making sure you have enough oil on the bottom so you're not hurting your pan or you're not causing a fire. But as you can see, I got a nice beautiful brown crust. It's not white, it's not gray. So it hasn't been three minutes, but we're going to go ahead and get started on our sauce because these guys are going to finish in our sauce later. So I'm just going to take them out. Don't freak out. They're not cooked, so it's okay for me to put them back on the same plate. If they were thoroughly cooked, then I would get a new plate. Don't worry. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get anybody sick or anything. 
All right, so this pan is super hot. So if I were to add my sauce ingredients, like my sour cream, my ginger garlic, all that, it would pop at me a lot and we would risk burning it. Um, so I'm gonna turn the heat down to a medium. All right, so I'm at about a six out of nine. Now I can start adding the fun stuff. So I've got my chickpeas. I'm gonna add them in away from myself because it's still a little hot. Woo! I'm gonna add some butter. Just a little bit. <laughs> I love butter. All right, so it's hard to calm down. We're gonna add our tomatoes or if you have other vegetables, if you have zucchini, throw it in. If you have vegetables that are gonna cook fast, throw them in because this is a great way to use them. You can put asparagus in here, broccoli in here, make it a whole thing so you're just using the stuff that you have in your, in your um, fridge. I'm gonna add in our tomatoes. Doo -doo -doo. Get some of this stuff out of the way. And then I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of our ginger garlic paste. This is the one I was talking about at the butter chicken class. This is ginger garlic paste you get at the Indian store. It's not diluted with water, which is why I like it and why I love to use it. Um, I don't like to use the garlic that's in the jar at the grocery store because it's diluted with water, so you have to add a lot more to get the same amount of flavor. So I'm gonna add about a teaspoon, add it in there. Okay. Then I'm gonna add my spices. So it's, let's see, I think we're doing one teaspoon of curry powder and one teaspoon of cumin. And if you want to be super authentic while you're cooking your chicken, you can also toast your cumin in a dry skillet and that gives it this really nutty, yummy flavor. You don't have to, but if you want to take it up a notch, that's the way to do it. So if I was using canned chicken or shrimp, what I would do, you know, I cooked that chicken for three minutes uh, on the first side, about one to two minutes on the second side. I would cook that canned chicken or shrimp for about a minute and I would take it right back out, make my sauce and then add it back in at the end. But it, you know, it's not gonna take as long to cook as the chicken does. That way you don't overcook it. Whoop. I'm spilling everywhere. Well, you know, just a little extra flavor. I don't even think it made it in the teaspoon. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll do better with this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. This smells so good. You can also toast your curry powder, too, if you'd like. Um, so when you toast curry powder, you'll know it's ready because it starts to turn this, like, dark orange color. Um, and your house smells awesome. So I've got that. I'm also going to add, I'm just going to eyeball it, a little salt pepper. I like a little more salt, so it's about a fourth of a teaspoon. Whoop! And fresh cracked black pepper. Right, I'm going to give it a stir. Notice how I didn't stir that whole time. Uh, so Marie, I know that's hard. Allison, I know that's hard. But it kind of helps get those chickpeas nice and tender. Okay, and it's smelling really good. All right, I'm gonna turn my heat back up to a seven and a half. And I'm gonna add my chicken broth. Oh yeah. All right, I have sour cream. So sour cream is something you don't wanna add while it's on that high heat. Um, even though I but I just turned it up, so it'll be fine and it has the chicken broth to buffer it. If you add it right away, you risk curdling it, especially if you're using a lower fat sour cream. You could also do Greek yogurt, but make sure it's not on super high heat when you add it. So, this is about a cup of sour cream. But like I said, you can use Greek yogurt or use whatever you have, even a plain yogurt. All right, I'm just going to stir it in. In our cilantro. Mix that in. And if 
you want to make it spicy, this is when you would want to add some red chili powder. Uh, Robert doesn't like spice, so I'm going to show you a way to add spice at the end. We're going to take our chicken and we're going to add it back in. And we're going to let it finish cooking in our sauce. So I'm just going to dip it so it's coated in that beautiful sauce. Both sides. And then all that juice from that chicken when it was resting, you're going to dump in there. Don't be scared. We're going to cook out anything that can make you sick. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to poison you, I promise. Okay. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. You see? Really easy. You could even chop up the chicken ahead of time if you'd like. Oh, look at this mess I made. Don't stir aggressively like me. <laughs> All right, and you see it's bubbling. Like this sauce is still on medium high. So it's bubbling, so it's gonna finish. What I would recommend is, this is usually when I start my rice. So I like to do my rice in a rice cooker. Um, so I would start my rice now, that way you have hot, fresh rice. You could add in some lime juice, some lemon juice, some cilantro to it. Um, add some of that curry powder into it as well. So you could definitely add that. Um, we're just gonna let the chicken finish cooking, and then that's all, it, that's all it takes. Isn't that easy? That's so easy, and you've got a quick Indian sauce. You can change up the flavors that you're using at your house. So I hope you enjoyed this video. We are gonna, you know, get to eating as soon as these guys are done. They have probably have about two more minutes. Um, and then I like to make sure I get a, a spoon like this so I can get all those chickpeas because they really do like break down and they get super tender. I'll be posting the recipe for tonight on www.sourpatchchef.com. I'm Christy and I hope to see you again soon. Happy Friday. Enjoy. Cheers.